Hello there. It's Wendy and we're going to start this video for posing perfectly. Uh, I'm going to start with my slip slap background. So what I've done is I've base coated my surface in the cobblestone, seal, sand, base coat, cobblestone. And then I'm going to take my three quarters flat brush and I'm going to start by just applying a little bit of paint in a few places. This is cobblestone again. So I just apply it in a few places here and there. I'm going to pick up sand gray and go in between. Now I'll work that sand gray into the cobblestone. And I use a crisscross. You see the back and forth motion. So I'm using the paint off of both sides of my brush, which is a good idea. And I'll put a bit more cobblestone down here and just work between it. Some people like to have lots of the light, some like lots of the dark. And there's not that much contrast between them. I wanted to keep this nice and soft, but I don't want it to have just a flat base coated background. So by working the colors back and forth into each other, if your cobblestone dries up, pick up a bit more. I'm using nice and soft. I am not using a lot of pressure. That's important. Um, a lot of times if you are working this and you feel that you're slower and you're worried your paint's gonna dry out, uh, a spray mist bottle works very well to just softly mist your background and that allows you to soften and blend your colors together again. So we're again we're looking to see some light patches and seeing the brush strokes is a good thing. It adds depth to your background. So I'll just turn my piece and I'll continue working the rest of it. So when it dries, you'll see a nice, soft, what do we call a slip slapped background. So it's basically just slip slap. You're just taking your brush and applying these strokes here and there. I do a little over here, a little over there. Cobblestone again in between to work the colors together. Of course, you're not wanting raised brush strokes and gobs of paint on there by any means. It's just nice and soft back and forth. And that's going to give you that soft slip slap background where you will see just, just little bits of color in the background. A little lighter, a little darker, almost a wispy cloudy sky kind of effect. All right. So that's our slip slapping. When you're doing them with darker, stronger colors, it's very dramatic. But this one we want to keep nice and soft and faint. Okay, <clears throat> we're going to start with our little feet on our kitty. So I'm going to just put a quick ba base coat, just a wet coat. And all that means is we're going to work while it's wet. So we just recoat the pads of the feet. I'm using a 3 8 or a number 10. And I'm going to pick up on, and now I'm switching to my, my Lunar Blender, and I'm going to pick up cobblestone. So I've picked up cobblestone on my Lunar Blender, and this whole technique we're just going to use the brush and slip slap. Little scratchy strokes back and forth in the center. I'm going to wipe my brush, I have an old towel. I'm going to pick up charcoal gray and I'm going to use my charcoal gray. I'm not having lots. I just want to pick up a little bit and I'm going to apply it along the outer edges. Just get that bright paint off both sides of the brushes by flipping your brush. Give my brush a little wipe and I'm just going to back and forth with this, just the tip of the brush. Fade those colors together. 
That's it. We want the center to remain lighter. If you feel you need to come back in with a little more cobblestone, that's good. It's just... That's it. And then we'll do the same for the other foot. Once we have both pads of our feet done, I'm going to thin some cobblestone. And with my 10-0 liner, I'm just going to add some little fine crisscross lines in the middle of the pads. They're going to be faint, just a little tiny bit of a highlight. Depends how light you left the cobblestone in the middle of your piece. And then we're going to go to the fur all the way around the outer edge. So I'm going to be using again my Lunar Blender, quarter inch, and we're going to use our cobblestone mix and our charcoal gray, and to lighten it, we're going to go with cobblestone and sand gray. <clears throat> so, we're going to start with our cobblestone mix, and I'm just going to come along and add a little coat of that. Just nice and loose. And I'm going to pick up charcoal gray. And I'm going to work from the bottom of the pad. You want it to be loose and choppy. You see the little wispy bits coming off of the edge. They can come off towards the pad or come off the other way. Now, I don't want to overwork it. So as I work my way around, I'm going to pick up cobblestone. So you see how I'll work them into each other. And it's just, I'll slow it down so you can see just that little flick brushes, sometimes standing up, sometimes a little bit laying down. You'll just work your way around. You want it to be loose and messy. So it's coming from the darker at the bottom. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little more of the charcoal around, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> along the edge of the piece and then I'm going to pick up a little tiny bit of sand gray. I just want to add a little highlight and it's if you load too much on your brush when I pick it up I work it in on the palette but if you have too much on your brush it's going to jump out at you. We just want little scratches and that's good for me. So I will go ahead and do the same on the other foot. Now we're going to, this little section underneath the chin, <clears throat> I'm going to do the wet coat mix, same as we did for the pads of the feet. Just put a little bit of a wet coat mix, take a little bit of charcoal gray, just kind of scuff a little in around the edges, and then a little tiny bit, like it's such a tiny area. Um, we're just going to put a little of the cobblestone in the middle and just work it into those colors. This is just going to look shaded afterwards. Remember, if any of this doesn't look as dark as it does in the photo, uh, we shade around everything. So it's going to get a stronger contrast afterwards. It makes a huge difference. <clears throat> so we're we're doing this to the little part under the chin. It'll be a lot better looking once the scarf's cleaned up and the little bits of his little cheeks come down over top of it. But for now, we need to stick that in there. It's quite shaded. Okay, so where we're going to go to next is our belly. Now, I'm going to take and I'm going to use my 3 eighths again and I'm going to wet coat my belly 
in our light mocha. As you can see, my belly wasn't solid coated to start with. Everything gets little bits added to it. So it was more of an anchor coat when we do our base coat so that we can't see through. So I wet coat the belly and then we're gonna start working, that was with my 3 8 or a number 10 flat. And then now I'm going back to my Lunar Blender and I'm going to use Cobblestone, Light Mocha, and Warm White. And we won't be using very much Warm White. We just want a little bit just to lighten it a bit. So, of course, our Cobblestone is going to be coming from the outer edges. So I'm going to go like we did on the pads of the feet. I'm not concerned about getting any over onto the arms or my little pom-pom or my scarf because we're going to clean all that up afterwards. So I just come through and I put those little scratchy strokes and then again I'm going to work them into the light mocha. Give my brush a wipe pick up a little light mocha and just scritch scratch back into so it's just the tip of the brush we're really using and I'm not pressing hard this is really really important we're not pressing hard just little scratchy strokes we want that wispy lightness to it so now dirty brush I'm picking up a little of the warm white and I'll put a few little flicky strokes. It's not very much. It's just to lighten that very center. And again, don't forget that this is going to be shaded. So it's going to get a lot stronger looking. I can still go in and put a little bit more of the cobblestone if I want. So you see how that just kind of, but it has to have that scat, you know, a little scratchy edge to it. We don't want it to look like a trim all the way around. So that's good for me now. So once we've done that, we're going to let that dry. We're going to go up to our ear. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to do the ear the same way we did our paw, the pad of our feet and the outer part of our feet. So I'm going to wet coat the center with our mix. And we're going to pick up our cobblestone. I now have switched back to my lunar blender. So I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to do a little light scritch scratchy strokes in the center. <clears throat> and I'm going to take the charcoal all the way around. Now again, it's shaded later, but it this is intended to have enough of a dark look inside. And we're going to be uh, dry brushing a little bit of our cheek color onto there. There we go. That looks good to me. I can clean my brush off if I want to soften any of the hard edges I've left there. And then <clears throat> I'll go for the same for the outside of the kitten's ear. So we're going to use, again, the, the uh, quarter inch. I'm just going to go ahead and put a quick coat on here, seems as, and I'll just 
it's not a full coat it's just a little slip slappy around the outer edges I pick up my I each time in between I am giving my brush a wipe off I like to keep a towel on my lap and I just kind of swipe across it when I'm doing that so I'm now picking up my quarter inch I'm picking up charcoal gray and of course our shadow is darker at the bottom so and you see that little scratch off the edge with the tip of the brush that gives us that little nice soft furry look I work my way up I'm going to pick up the cobblestone and fade off into the darker and you see like it's just using again the tip of the brush you're kind of just scratch dancing our way back into that color you want them to fade into each other little flickies and then I'm going to take just a little bit of my sand gray again work it in on the palette so that you don't have too much I'm only looking for a little bit of a highlight well you don't have to work it in that much okay I do want to see it And of course, you're never going to get two kittens that are going to look the same. So, that looks cute to me. And if I want to have a few, see how I can just bring a few little flicks off the edge to make it look like the fur overhangs the center of his ear. And again, it's getting shaded, so it's going to darken inside that center of the ear. All right. He's coming right along. We're going to switch now and we're going to go down to his arms. Now, the bottom part of his arms are going to be in the uh, same as the belly with the light mocha. And the top part of his arms are going to be done with the dark gray mix, just like the ears and the pads of the feet. What's important here is that when we're working our colors together, I'm just going to zoom it back out a bit. Out. <laughs> there we go. When we're working, we want our colors to kind of scratchy meld together. You don't want to see a stripe where one stops and one starts. So I can kind of help that even just with my um, wet coating so I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put my wet coat of my dark gray mix and I'm just gonna dab it downwards wipe my brush give it a little clean off take my light mocha and do you see what I mean I'm just gonna blend those two into each other so they're both wet when we're working here so now again I take <clears throat> I'm just going to put a little of my wet coat there again. I'm going to pick up. Now, you want to come from the top down um, normally, but what we're going to do here, I want to work in between these two. So first I'm going to pick up my cobblestone and fade my way up and fade my way down. Then I can take, wipe my brush, pick up my charcoal, come from the top, work my way, crisscross, slip slap, kind of scratchy little strokes, fading off into that cobblestone. Cobblestone back up into it.
and I can have little wispy strokes coming off the edge of the appearance of his fur. Wipe my brush off. I'm going to pick up my sand gray. Uh, pardon me, light mocha. <laughs> Big boo boo there. And I'm going to work my way up into there. Again, we use the cobblestone. That's going to create our shadow on our little paw. into the light mocha and I want to just back and forth between the two we want to have our paw change in transition in the same area so when we're and this one doesn't have a lot of area normally I would have done this paw first because this is on top but because there's not a lot for you to see here in transition the way I'm working them together I wanted to go to this one because there's a longer bit of arm <clears throat> Once you get used to doing that here, that's going to help. Now, again, I'm a little tiny bit of the warm white. Really work it in on the palette. I'm not wanting lots. Just a little bit. More to the center of the pad. Or, pardon me, paw. Okay. So that's, and we'll go ahead and do the other little arm. Now, like I say, I'll wet coat. And I'm just using my Lunar Blender here. Wipe my brush all off, wet coat the bottom part. And remember, we've got cobblestone works good because cobblestones are lightener here and it's also the one we use to darken the bottom section you want those little wispy fur effects light mocha and it's important just to work those two sections so that you don't have a stripe. Take my, I'm wiping my brush off in between. And it doesn't matter if it's better to come from a little more up into the pom-pom to get a little of that dark transition fading its way down. That's fine because the pom-pom's back on top afterwards. <coughs> Pardon me. Back into light mocha. I'm, I'm kind of just paying attention to the other arm. I want them to kind of work a little bit the same. They're never going to be perfectly the same. No kittens would be the very same. But And that little bit of wispy fur off the edge works nicely too. Remember our our little pads of our feet are behind, so that little bit of wispy fur coming over onto them helps. And now that I've done the paw that's underneath, I can take a little bit more of the light mocha, warm white type of thing. So that that one is underneath and there so your your intention is to blend those two paws so that the light fur creeps up into the dark fur too cute so of course next we're off to the face and the face is going to be done the very same way that we just did our feet so i'm gonna just Bring it down a little bit there so that, let's see, that's not too bad I guess. So 
we're going to work the same way. I'd like to work from the top down. <clears throat> I kind of flipped that around there, sorry. I'd like to work from the bottom up. It's easier to get your light working and, and, and work it up into the dark. If you, for the face, we, we want to just put a little, I'm starting again with our light mocha. And you're going to use your, your photo as reference here. I'm not looking to fill it in. I'm not base coating it. I'm just doing a quick wet coat with these strokes. I'm going to pick up my cobblestone and we see that it's darker along and you're, like I say you're, you're using your reference of your photo darker along the edges work your way in under his little nose <clears throat> If we don't have any of the cobblestone in behind our mocha, in behind our light mocha, it won't give us the blend up in stroke. Now we'll have to work back and forth up here with these. I'm wanting this cobblestone to go all the way around our outer edges back into my light mocha scratch scratch between the two it's just a a nice soft little scratchy blend and again all of this is still going to get shading <clears throat> so I'm going to wipe my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the warm white. And scratch in our little bit of highlight. We're going to pull a little tiny wispy uh fur off of our edges afterwards, little defined bits. I'm going to work a little bit more cobblestone. In the dark part. Wipe out my brush. See how I'm getting a little bit of a trim look there? I want to scratch, scratch between those two. But again, remember, I'm really just using the tip of the brush so that's nice and soft. And then I'm going to continue up in the top of the face. <clears throat> like we did with the bottom, like we've done with all of the other dark sections of our little kitty. And again, it's always handy to have your photo right down close to it. I'm not concerned if I'm getting anything on his eyes. I'm going to take my charcoal gray. Pardon me, apply that. So it's kind of very dark all in, in these sections by his eye, especially on this side here, because it's getting a shadow from the crease of his eye, as well as a shadow from the hat.
So I just scratch scratch that. And then of course, <clears throat> our cobblestone is gonna come from the middle and just outwards. Just dance a little with the tip. Not wanting to choke out all of our dark. And then work my way down into the light mocha. And I'll do the same back and forth with the light mocha a little bit back up into it. And again, I'm not too concerned about getting anything on my eyes. They're there as a base point so that it doesn't take us as long in class as well. But it helps as a reference if you put those eyes on and then when we're working into it, we don't have to worry so much. i am just got a bit much on my brush there. We don't have to worry so much um, about how it's going to look. You can you get that idea of how it's looking when you have your eyes in that blocked in base. Like I say, nine times out of ten you have to completely redo them, but I feel like it really helps. So you see how what I'm playing with here is I want to have my light mocha fade off into the cobblestone dark gray. I can even take a little tiny bit of my warm white in here. It's, it's a case of back and forth. I think a little of the cobblestone should be showing around these eyes too. And now because we have the dark set in there, we can do our little scritchy scratch edges here so that the fur is up on there. Like I say, we are coming with our um, liner and we're going to add some little soft bits of fur. scratch in between those. I don't want anywhere that looks like it's a trim. We don't want a solid line anywhere. That's not too bad. Like I say, we're going to do a bit of dry brushing. We're going to do a, a seam down the middle of that little bit there. So gonna clean it off and clean my brush off and then we're ready to do a little more work on his face so we want to make sure before we go and uh, do any dry brushing or anything like that that we have it um, nice and dry so we do have something to do. We'll, we'll add some thin little dots here right now. So what we're going to do, we're going to thin down some of our dark gray mix and thin it down watery. So I'm just using my 10-0 liner. I'm going to just pull a little of that out of my mix puddle. And I'm going to thin down nice and watery. And so I have this paint thinned on my liner. And I'm just going to dab in these little dots. I want them watery. And we're not looking for too, too much. And then lots of times I'll blot with my finger a bit so that they don't look pronounced. You don't want to have there, that's not too bad. 
just a little bit of loose there. So now I'm going to dry this and we're going to nice and softly add a little bit. I can see here before I get doing that, that I need a little stronger around my outer edge. So I'm going to just take a little of my cobblestone. I've just picked up cobblestone and my dark mix. Just want to have a bit more contrast at the edge of his muzzle. Now I'm going to back into my light mocha from there. Wipe my brush so I don't have too much. That's the thing about going back in. It's very little on the brush. Get my warm white again. There we go. That's a little bit better. But you see how easy that is to go back in there and add that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry it. So I'm going to take my, <laughs> it's pretty beaten up, my quarter inch domed stippler by Heinz Jordan. I pick up my paint, pounce it in on the palette, really work it into the brush. Go on to my towel and I just twist my brush. You want to make sure that the paint that's inside your brush isn't sitting there in a big lump of wet paint. So I give it a little grind, get that excess out of there. So I'm going to have a nice soft paint. See, there's it's more of dry paint, nothing coming off on my hand. And I'm going to take and I'm going to nice and softly dry brush some soft pink cheeks. And I'm going to take and go up into here. Let's give a little of that terra coral up in that ear as well. <clears throat> then I'm going to take my zero round and I'm going to base coat my nose. So I've got my nice little nose base coated in the terra coral. So I'm going to pick up some light mocha on the dirty brush and I'm going to streak side to side. So you see how it's wet right now? So that color just streaks in there, leaving it a little stronger around the outer edges. That's with my light mocha. So now I'm going to take back to my liner and I'm going to pick up thinned sand gray. So I just thin some sand gray, little water, pull it off to the side, <clears throat> and I'm going to be adding these lines. So we're now adding little vertical thinned sand gray lines. Once I have those on there, I'm going to pick up a little warm white, again on the dirty brush, and just add a little swipe highlight line. That's it. There's not much to her sweet little nose. And then we're going to do an outline, but I don't want to draw an outline. I just, I'm going to pat with the liner. So 
so it does it looks like it's a stitched little nose and I'm going to bring that line down from the nose. See, I got a little on my nose there. So I'll just take a little of the terra coral. Push that back a bit. And again, when this is done, I'm going to thicken this one up a bit. I want it to look stitched, so I'm not wanting it to look perfectly straight. There. And we're going to go ahead now, and we're going to clean up our eyes. So we'll rebase our eyes. All right, we're ready to do the eyes. Now we're going to be using, we've got them base coated, we're going to be using our liner for the colored section of our eyes. So I'm going to use my liner and I'm going to use it to put a wet coat. But remember when I say a wet coat, I'm referring to I put a coat on and I want to work while it remains wet. So I'm going to take, with my dirty brush, sand gray, and I'm going to blend in from the outer edge of the eye into the wet antique green. So back and forth, I take antique green, make that line. So I want to see the lines. I'll pull green back in there. So I want it lighter along the outer edges. And now I'm going to brush mix on the palette. I'm going to pick up some charcoal gray and antique green, and work them together on the palette. It's a little darker. So that's going to come from this end inwards. So that creates a cute look to our eye and we want to see those lines in it. So I'll do it again over here. Put a wet coat with my liner. Now we're switching sides. I'm going to put my pick up on my dirty brush. I'm going to pick up my sand gray. Bring it inwards. Wipe my brush. If I want to work any more of the antique green back in. Then I brush mix antique green, charcoal gray and I come from this end inwards. So they just streaky little lines into each other. And I'm going to take my creates flat shader or a number 10 side load neutral gray and to the outer edge flip it for the opposite on this side and I always blot with my finger when I float for an eye. Might make that a little stronger up top. And I also... Okay. I'm going to do a little stronger float.
There we go. That's a bit better. I like to try to leave a little bit of black around the edge. If you don't, you can add it back on when you outline around your eye. So we're going to thin down cobblestone. So I thin it down and I'm going to add what I call a starburst. Okay, so that's simply like so. And so I add my little starburst and that's in the thinned cobblestone. And there's a couple little dots you want to put around too. So we'll just just add a couple of little dots. And then I'm going to take and add in the middle of my starbursts, I'm going to add sand gray. A nice size dot of sand gray. Now I'm going to, I guess we can go ahead at this time and outline the rest of the eye. That'll clean up the edge. Now I can add my little lashes now or put them in later, whatever you feel like, because we are adding some little fine fur lines. But we put some little lashes there. And a couple of little lashes there. I'll come back and fatten those up a wee bit at the base. And then the same thing on the other side. Now, a lot of people prefer to turn the piece upside down. It's whatever works for you if it's more comfortable because you do have more control with a liner if you're pulling towards yourself. We'll just add those little lashes. And we're going to be adding little fine pieces. Um, I like to kind of put them in at the end, so we're going to add those afterwards. So we're going to work on our little scarf now. I'm going to apply a wet coat of sand gray. Now I did clean up the edges of my scarf. Get the fur off of it. So I'm going to put a nice coat of sand gray on our scarf. And I'm looking for my towel. There we go. All right, so I've got a coat of that on there. I'm going to pick up on my dirty brush, just going to side load and pick up cobblestone and I'm going to work it in. So it's just blending it in all the way along. I flip the brush over to get the paint off of that side of the brush too. Work it along. So it's just darker around the other ed outer edges. 
when you blend it like this, it helps for the look of fabric. I'm going to pick up a bit more, and I want to create the look for this bit of a crease in here. So I'm just blending. I got the brush up a little bit. Just blend that in a little bit so it creates the look of a crease in, in the scarf. That's not bad. You can see a little light put peek it over the edge here, so I'll get that. So that's not too bad. Now what I have to do is dry that. So I'm going to dry it. And then So we're going to dry it, and then I'm going to use warm white, and I'm going to dry brush. A highlight on there. So I want to dry brush some warm white. little down here and just gonna highlight it up a bit I, think I could even go for a bit more there we go so we've got our highlight on there and then we're going to add stripes so I'm going to take glorious gold and my liner. So when you're adding your stripes, the first one here, we want to create the shape so we see we're into our crease a little bit there. So I give it a little bit of a... that follows the crease. I'm leaving a little bit of room in between because we're going to put some champagne gold stripes, glamour dust. It really that's cute. So once we get going with this, I have to kind of gently lose that curve going the one direction. You see how I straighten it out a bit and start going the other direction. And then over here it doesn't have as much of a crease there, so I'll just So this creates the look that our scarf is ripping. And then I'm taking my Glamour Dust Champagne. When you put that on, there's like a, a glue or a bonding agent inside here. So it's gonna look a little bit milky at first but as it dries, you see your glitter. And I like to do a couple of coats of this, so I'll go back afterwards and after it's dry and add a bit more. It's up to you how much you like to have. That one little tiny stripe I see there is too thin with my glorious gold. I'm gonna come back here and there we go. It's a bit better. Back into my... Don't try to go too far because you'll be going with just the bonding agent and not the glitter. And always shake your Glamour Dust paint really, really good. I like to put an alley inside there, or marble or an alley, and put that inside of my metallics and my, my Glamour Dust paints. It helps to shake them up really nice and works pretty, pretty good for that. So now we have our scarf done. We're going to move on to our hat. So... I'm for the hat I'm gonna put another coat on there I need another coat so I'll go ahead and I'll do that first 
So we're going to shade our hat. I've cleaned up my hat. Uh, I'm going to shade it with my dark gray mix using a number 12 or half inch shader. So I'm going to side load and nice and softly shade along the outer edge of my hat. Lean to the side of your brush, the water side of your brush, to walk it in a bit, and then nice and softly mop. I'm kind of looking shading around. A, I can see where I've missed my edge there. I hope the glare I see here isn't reflecting on the camera too. Lean to the water side of my brush to walk it out. And I'm going to shade next to the brim. And of course this is the same color as the brim so dry that. You always want to do your shading where you can that it's not going to interfere and wipe it out. So I'll give it a quick dry. Reload. And I'm going to shade to create that fold in my hat. And then I'm going to shade right here to create the crease opposite that. I'm going to create another crease. Now they don't have to be exactly. And I'll put another one in here. Give it a dry. and softly shade on the opposite side of that crease and along the rest of the top of the hat. And then I'm going to dry it because we want a dry brush. So we're going to dry brush sand gray. I'm going to use my 3 8 dome stippler bigger than we've used for our cheeks. So I've got my dome stippler. I want to put sand gray nice and strong dry brush. here and 
and a little in the inside of those creases. Now I am going to do a little float of sand gray, a little highlight. And I need a bit of fresh sand gray. to strengthen that right there. Now the brim doesn't have too much on it because we're going to be doing our brim with our shading which is basically the shading that we're going to put around everything so the majority of our brim I'm just going to put out a bit more of my mix you can hear that alley in there um, when I make a mix if I like the color I'll make enough in a bottle so that I can keep it. I just make sure I label it, which project it was for, and what the mix is, because these kinds of colors I really like, and I end up using them in a lot of my pieces. Um, so, we're going to wet coat our brim in our dark gray mix. So I'll just go ahead and put a wet coat of dark gray mix. It's such a pretty color. It's very rich looking. So I have a nice wet coat on here and I'm going to pick up some cobblestone, just cobblestone, and I'm going to chisel it in to create. So I just work that in, those two spots, just back and forth. It's just to create the look that the hat brim is bunched up. That's it. And then the rest is going to be done with our shading. I can see my sand gray highlight here could get popped up a little bit there. Take my liner and I've exhausted all that warm white. I'm going to take my liner and some warm white and add a couple of swipes. On that brim. And I'm going to add, I'm going to swipe a couple of lighter on that hat too, just to pop that up a little bit. And then we're going to get ready to do our pom pom. So our pom pom, I'm going to be using a deer foot and I'm going to stipple it with sand gray 
and cobblestone. So we're going to start with our cobblestone. So I'll stipple that in. Back to the pom-pom. I'm going to stipple it with my quarter inch deer foot and that's in cobblestone and then I'm going to take and stipple along the top lightly coming down with sand gray and pick up a little warm white and stipple it to the middle. We're going to add little flickies to this with our liner. Um, and again, this is being shaded. So what we're going to do now is we're going to thin charcoal gray and I, I don't want to thin a lot, I just add a little drop of water to my charcoal gray on my palette. Just a little drop of water thins it enough so that you're going to have a nice soft float. So I'm going to side load with charcoal gray and this is where we shade everything. We strengthen up our shading. But when I'm shading, so I'm going to come inside the ear now. Do you see that I'm just going to do like what I'm going to call a pit pat because I don't want to shade a solid line because we've got fur. I'm going to shade next to the eye, nice and soft down this side of my eye. I'm going to shade along underneath the brim. And you're just going to hop around. You don't want to have to be sitting and drying things. So we strengthen all of our shading. I'm going to shade underneath the Smudge that a bit. If you'd rather go down to a, a smaller brush and shade on your face, you can use your 3 8 I, a lot of times, use my finger to dab and mop. It gives you a nice soft effect. We're going to be adding, I've, I'm saving our little um, furry marks, um, little tiny fine fur lines, even though I have them in your pattern on earlier, I'm saving them to do now after we do our shading so that they'll stay a little more pronounced. We shade our entire brim of our hat and that's where that comes in nicely. Start and as you can soften bigger areas that you shade with your mop. I'll shade a little down the middle, soften that out, 
and when that dries it'll come back there. So that's what I mean by hop around in places. You kind of just work your way around nice and soft. And the charcoal gray goes on looking a little bit browny, but it does turn to a little bit more of a gray brown once it's done. Once it's dry and it's set. I'll strengthen up my creases. And this changes the whole thing. Now you can see the definition between your pads of your feet. And again, like I say, I shade by jabbing in here and there loosely. because we want to keep the look of the fur. And a lot of times you'll come back in and maybe flick or scratch a few more pieces of fur around the edge. I like to use my built-in blender to shade in areas. This is going to separate the paws and put that other paw on top. This starts to give them a lot more dimension. And it depends on your slip slap, on how bold or how much light you had in it. So if I shade a soft bit around the out bits of my feet, if they fade too much into the background, same thing with my pom pom. We're going to shade on the pom pom. So that's going to darken that bottom of our pom-pom and then we're going to add our little flicks on it. I strengthen up my shading here.
strengthen up the outside of his hat. And I think that looks pretty good. Get my dyslexic brain to figure out which way I want to go with that brush. That's not too bad. So now you see all your little contrasts. And I'm going to take and I'm going to thin down cobblestone. And I'm going to just come in and I'm going to add some little flicks here and there with my liner. So just a few little thinned fur pieces. So that's cobblestone. Just little jabby And I'm following the direction that the fur would go. Always the way you would pet a cat or a dog. They look bright when you put them on, but they die down and they just become little tiny highlights. You can put a few here and there. We're not going to make him look completely. And I can bring a few down into the bridge of the nose too so that you'll actually see the fur there. You can add a couple if you want on your arms. A few little flickies here and there on the feet. And I might have thinned this a bit too much in the beginning, so I'll just come back and pop those up a bit more. And then we're going into our pom-pom with the warm white. Just a little, made those a bit long, little flicks. heavier towards the middle, of course. That's going to make our pom-pom look like it's got highlights. thin a little bit of charcoal and add a few little dark ones along the bottom too. I'm going to add 
few white highlights on my scarf. Actually, I can see I didn't finish shading on my scarf, so I gotta do that. But we have, I'm back into my sand gray, and I'm gonna pull a little fur flickies on his face. I think I'm going to thin a bit of sand gray and pull a few there too. I think it depends on how much of that dark I've got in there. You can never tell. So a little sand gray back in here. I like to smudge them with my finger. It softens them as I'm putting them in. I'm going to pull those little fine hair in the ear. Not too, too much. And then we want to put in our nice, soft, warm white whiskers. But I I'll get finished shading on my scarf, so I'm just going to go back in there first. That's better. And I think I'm going to strengthen a wee bit bad for that. All right, so we need to add some nice, thin, fine, warm white whiskers. So make sure you thin it down nice and inky. And you don't want your whiskers all to start in the same place. when you start working with them. If they're not pulling out, they're not thin enough. You don't want them to start from the same spot and you don't want them to finish at the same spot. And then I'm gonna pull this way. I'm gonna have them come over onto our scarf
So I play back and forth with that, and I'm going to pull some little tiny fine lighter hair with nothing almost on my liner, just a little. You could even mix a little sand gray and warm white together, just brush mix that. And that looks not too bad. Put a few little fine on our paws. And then we're going to do dots with a nice size stylus. I'm going to do glorious gold. Now when you're doing something like this, you want to be able to do it and leave it alone. You don't want to have to put your arm anywhere near there afterwards because it's going to smudge. They stay raised for a while. Well, they stay raised, period, but they stay wet for quite a while. So I put those in. And this is in the glorious gold. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to add more in between with my champagne glamour dust. To finish off your piece, you're going to stencil some sand gray snowflakes. And that's if you choose. When I am stenciling, I always like to have maybe half a snowflake off the edge so that it looks more like a patterned background rather than circling around. I'm also going to take my liner and you know the little starbursts that we did in the eye. I'm going to thin down and I'm going to do a little starburst decoration on the hat brim. Keep your arm out of the raised dots. So we'll go through our hat, add a few of these starbursts and then I'm going to come back in between with some uh, champagne gold dots that doesn't look too bad you just want it to look uneven You can always add more after. I like to have the soft glitter from the Glamour Dust paint. And like I say, they stay milky looking until they dry. You can see how my stripes, sometimes it's hard in the camera though, but you can see how the stripes have um, dried down and you can only see the glitter. So I'm going to go back in here and add another coat while we're at it.
each time you add another coat, it just gets a little more glitter. So it's a preference as to how much you'd like. And there he is. I'm not going to show you the snowflakes because I want everything to be dry before I do that. Um, I'll probably add a few more of the little flickies in the middle of my pom-pom, but pretty much I'd say that that's that. So I hope you've enjoyed painting this cute little kitten with me and that we will paint again together. Take care and I hope you have a great Christmas.